there are beautiful rivers. There are trees of life flowing, that the throne of God uh, is there, and we see God's glory and majesty. Um, and so we can begin to try to imagine some of those things, but keep in mind that we're never going to fully get it, and we should look forward to eventually seeing it for ourselves. You're listening to Car Seat Questions, a podcast for parents of curious kids. I'm Lauren. And I'm Eddie. And if you're anything like us, you either have a kid or you care for a kid with questions. Questions about all sorts of things. So for the next half hour, hop into the passenger seat, buckle your belt, and become childlike with us as the Lord takes us where he wants us to go. Enjoy the show. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Merchant. Um, If you could just share with us a little about who you are, how you're connected to Moody, and about your family. Of course. I am a professor of theology at Moody. I've been at Moody for 10 years. Other than that, uh, my wife and I, we have four children. We live in the suburbs, a town called Roselle. So today we're going to be talking about heaven with you. We surveyed a group of parents, and questions about heaven were very popular, and kids have a lot of questions about them. And as we were preparing for the episode today, I was reminded of a not story, but the thing I did when I was a child, um, we lived in kind of a mountainous area and we had like these big boulders in our backyard and me and my sister, and there was like, you know, like lizards and like fun stuff. Um, me and my sisters would play out there all the time, but I vividly remember, this was a reoccurring game. I vividly remember playing with one of my friends, heaven and hell. Like we were angels and we had like little pads of paper and then the people had to come up to us and tell us like all the bad things they did or like how their lives went and be like, oh, I guess you're going to hell. Or like, oh, great, you get to go to heaven. And we play that game like a lot. And not only is it, first of all, heretical, but also. <laughs> so you're saying you had the book of life. Yes, I had it in front of me. Yeah, I yes, exactly. It's very wrong. But what it tells me looking back is that I was trying to process as a child heaven and hell I understood the concepts and I understood like we go to heaven and we go to hell and maybe there's angels there but I was trying to process with the information that I had what is going to happen to us after we die and I think kids in that way have a lot of questions about heaven and they want to know what it's going to be like and they're processing through the ways they know how through play to answer those questions for themselves and so I thought it'd be important for us today to talk about how we can answer those big questions about heaven for our children whether it's in books or movies especially for children we see a lot of like pictures of images that are like fat babies with harps like floating (laughs) on clouds and we know that's not true but I think we just like have no we feel like we have no concrete way of knowing what heaven looks like if a child were to ask you what heaven looks like, how would you help them understand what we do know? There's a couple things to keep in mind. It's not totally wrong to imagine what heaven might be like. We almost can't do it. We want to imagine God being there and our loved ones and happiness and those sorts of things. But let's keep first in mind, the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2.9, uh, he's, he's quoting the Old Testament. He says, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And Jesus tells us in, in uh, uh, John uh, 18, uh, verses 2 and 4, he says, In my Father's house there are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would not have told you mm-hmm. that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again uh, and take you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. And you may know uh, the way to where I'm going. Mm. So Jesus goes to prepare this place. And then Paul also warns us, we can't imagine exactly what that place is going to be. So we have to keep those things in mind. And the biblical imagery of heaven that we find in various places, for example, in Isaiah, in the book of Revelation, this is very imaginative language. And biblical Mm -hmm. scholars um, know that this is very imaginative and in some ways figurative language. But we can't fully imagine, and that's why it's 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 sort of imaginative. Yeah. Uh, is it okay to imagine? Sure. 
if you keep that in mind, it's okay to imagine. And so the Bible does tell us some figurative uh, things. For example, we might look at Revelation in 21 and 22 and see um, that there are beautiful rivers. There are trees of life flowing, that the throne of God uh, is there, and we see God's glory and majesty. Um, and so we can begin to try to imagine some of those things, but keep in mind that we're never going to fully get it, and we should look forward to eventually seeing it for ourselves. I always pictured a lot of gold <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of white color, and I don't know why that is. Bright and light. Yeah, and also, like, the Father's House, like, how many rooms are you thinking? Like, millions? <laughs> <laughs> what what was that song? Whose song was that? Um, the artist, I don't remember. Anyone in the room remember that song? Big Big House? Big Big House, yeah, yeah. Where oh. you can play football and stuff. I bet you were going to be playing football with lots of food. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think kids also have a lot of questions about like who's going to be in heaven from their lives. So I'm going to start with the small one first, the not as dramatic one. Will our dogs be in heaven? Some years ago, um, <clears throat> we lost our family dog. He was uh, He was a rescue. And he was a bit skittish, maybe had been mistreated uh, before mm. we got him, not really sure. We didn't have him very long. And we took him on vacation with us, and he ended up getting disoriented and, and ran away, and oh. we never found him. We hoped that he was picked up by some loving family, mm -hmm. and my daughter asked me the same question. She was only about 10 at the time, and she said, Daddy, will I see Simmons again in heaven? And that was really heartbreaking for me. Mm-hmm. We don't have any indication from the Bible that God resurrects the animals. Yeah. Um, we are told that Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. He is the first to be resurrected from the dead and that we who are in him will be resurrected likewise. So we will come back to have our bodily existence after dying and departing from our bodies. Could God do it? And this is the conversation I have with my daughter. Certainly God could. God is loving and kind, and we know in heaven, we think about something like this, losing a beloved pet, let alone a loved one in our family. Um, Revelation 21 and 22 tell us that uh, God will wipe away every tear from every eye, and there will be mm -hmm. death no more. There will be no more mourning. This is Revelation 21, 4. No crying or pain. And so we had that night crying and pain over losing Simmons, and my pain was the pain of my children. And mm -hmm. um, I miss the dog too, but I, I, I hurt more that, that they were now losing their dog. And God will wipe away every tear. Now, how will God wipe away every tear? God certainly could do that. The Bible doesn't tell us that he would. So we can, we can maybe uh, at least trust in God's goodness and take seriously that he'll wipe away every tear. Um, so it's a possibility, but it's not a biblical certainty. Yeah. And I think the bigger question is, uh, we had an actual child ask this question we, when we surveyed a group of parents. It was, will my uncle go to heaven when he dies since he doesn't believe in God? And that's like such a hard question to answer for children because, you know, this is their uncle. This is someone that they love, but I want to know if they're going to be in heaven too. Yeah. How, yeah. How do we answer that with care and grace for the, you know, emotions of a small child? Of course. There's a couple of things to say. The first thing is it's ambiguous when somebody says they don't believe in God. Uh -huh. Very, very few people are thoroughgoing, consistent atheists who actually mm. believe that there's no God in the way that most adults believe there are no unicorns. Yeah. It would be really nice if unicorns exist. I can imagine what a unicorn would be like. But unfortunately, I know that there are no unicorns, and some people are atheists in that way. In truth, the vast majority of people who say they don't believe in God are actually saying they don't trust in God. Because when mm -hmm. they're pushed and they're really um, asked to explain more what they think about God, they'll often start talking about a very ugly, stern, mm -hmm. distant, mean sort of deity. Yeah. And they'll describe God in those ways. And they say, I don't believe in God. And the God who they're describing is someone that we don't believe in either. And so if they're just denying that kind of God, then then fair enough. They're not necessarily thoroughgoing atheists. And so they're saying they don't trust in God. Now, the only way to go to heaven, a very famous passage Paul tells us in Romans 10, 9, uh, if you confess with your 
mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so confessing with our mouths and believing in our hearts. So believing in Jesus is how we're saved. And if um, the child's uncle is saying, I don't believe in Jesus in that way, well, then that would be really sad news. Mm. But again, when somebody says they don't believe in God, it doesn't necessarily mean, ironically, that they don't believe in Jesus in that way. Mm -hmm. In some cases, there are people who are coming to trust Jesus in those ways, but they've rejected a false idea of God that they got from somewhere else along the way. And in that stage, they're saying, I don't believe in God. Um, another really heartening thing we see at Jesus' crucifixion at his crucifixion, of course, there were two other men, the Gospels tell us, that were crucified with him. And one was mocking him. One did not believe that he was the Messiah. And the other one apparently did. And even in the last moment of his life, the literal last moment of his life, he came to believe that Jesus was Lord. And so we know that the Holy Spirit prompts this stuff. Again, we don't figure this stuff out on our own. And so we can trust God's goodness, God's holiness, that he does what's best. And it is hard. It's never going to be easy to lose a loved one. It's never going to be happy to lose a loved one. It's always going to be sad. Even when we know that they trust Jesus and that they're with him, it's still sad. Yeah. My mother-in-law recently passed away. And my wife and I, it goes without saying that my wife loves her dearly. And so did I. And she knows Jesus. And we know for sure she's with the Lord. In fact, right before she died, uh, my father-in-law said, she said, oh, hello, hi, hi, as if she was seeing Jesus. Oh. Now, we don't know exactly what was happening. Yeah. But that was really encouraging to us, that she was happy and she was greeting yeah. somebody. And then a few moments later, she passed away. Hmm. So we have a lot of assurance that she's with the Lord. It was still very sad. We mm -hmm. cried a lot. And I'm getting emotional right now. It's still mm -hmm. very sad. That's just what human life is like. So feeling sad is absolutely okay. But trusting that God does what's good and right and that someone can trust even in their last moments, that's up yep. to the Holy Spirit. And we can yep. have some hope in that. I think kind of going along with that answer is how do we talk to children about how to get to heaven? You know, some kids think you like, you climb a ladder. Like how do you actually get to heaven? What does it look like? What does bodily resurrection look like? Yeah. The book of Philippians says that um, to be apart from the body is to be present with the Lord. So mm. when we die, we put our bodies in the ground, but we don't disappear. You and I, mm -hmm. we go to be present with the Lord. So again, we're something more than our bodies. We have bodies, but we aren't bodies. Yeah. And we go to be in God's presence. And so it's not a matter of, of climbing the ladder or going up and up and up or... <laughs> or something like that, but immediately entering into the presence of God uh, with him. And how do we get there? Again, by trusting that Jesus is Lord, not by being a good person, not by being a good person. It is a fallacy to think that good mm. people go to heaven and bad people go to yeah. hell. That's not true. That's a popular misunderstanding. And when you were playing your game as a, as a child, uh, that's a little bit of what you were doing. Yeah, what, exactly. What it, <laughs> yes. Trying to figure out, did you do enough good? Did you do too much bad? Oh, you did a little too much bad. Now it, you know, it sort of tilts this way. Mm -hmm. That is not uh, what the Bible teaches as, as more mature, mature Christians, as of course we know. I thought that at one time in my life as well. According to the Bible, actually everybody's bad, which is a little bit hard yes. to believe. And it's often yeah. offensive to us. Everybody is bad. All mm -hmm. who sin and fall short of the glory of God Everyone is deserving of separation from God, which is mm -hmm. hell. But in God's graciousness, the Holy Spirit has showed us and taught us that Jesus is Lord so that we can come into a right relationship. And now, yes, we can and do do things that are glorifying to God. We do things that please God, but not because I'm so good and I have the power to do it. And I just always have other people's best interests in mind. And I just naturally live according to the Sermon on the Mount. No, not at all. I naturally live in a selfish way. I know myself. Mm -hmm. But when I do things that God wants me to do for others and I treat them as Jesus would treat them, I'm learning to do that by the Holy Spirit. And I do things that are pleasing to God. None of those things place me in heaven. 
It's the trust that I first put in Jesus that puts me in heaven. So how do we get there? When we die, we're immediately in God's presence. There's not some journey that we have to take. There's not some distance between us and God. We're already united to him, so we're immediately mm -hmm. with him. And um, and it's through trusting in Jesus. And some people who trust in Jesus do many wonderful things and do many good works, and we look up to them and we admire them and we're thankful to them. And ultimately, we're thankful to God and what he's doing in them. And some people who trust Jesus, maybe there's not much to say in terms of the mm -hmm. great things that they did in their yeah. lives. But all the same, we're all in the presence of God because of his graciousness, not because of all the great things we do or don't do. Mm -hmm. This was another question we got from a, a real kid. And it really got me. I just was like, the way they were thinking about this was really deep, I thought. It says, how did people in the Old Testament get to heaven if Jesus hadn't died yet? The same way that people after Jesus get to heaven by trusting in Jesus. And mm -hmm. so um, it's biblically not totally clear, but that's fair mm -hmm. because we don't totally need to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in one sense, it's not our issue and not our business. Yeah. Uh, but apparently those saints were waiting in some way, mm. uh, waiting until uh, Jesus's redemption and on the cross, he says, mm. it is finished. And he took the sins of the world on himself, as we often say. But not only that, that's not the end of the story. He exchanged our sins. He took them on himself as if he were the sinner when he's not. And then he gave us his goodness, or in biblical terms, we say his righteousness. And so now we actually have Christ's righteousness in us. So we're as righteous as Christ, even though I sin, even though I do things that are not quite right and not always pleasing to God and just outright wrong in some, some ways, I still have Christ's righteousness. And so that's what Jesus does for us uh, on the cross. And so in the same way, so there's a sense in which the Old Testament people uh, are waiting. And we mm. see also Old Testament saints at the transfiguration mm. testifying that Jesus is Lord. Uh, we mm -hmm. see Moses there present with Jesus testifying. Mm. Um, Jesus tells us in John 8 that Abraham saw his coming and rejoiced. And so the Old Testament saints are also looking to Jesus for their salvation. And in his resurrection, they were resurrected with him as all those who are in Christ are, 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 mm. are ascend to heaven with, with Jesus. That's good. I don't even really thought about that. I literally don't think that ever crossed my mind, but this child helped me think about that. Um, what is one common misconception or maybe an incorrect response that you've heard about heaven? Maybe I'll just mention too, one I've already talked about yeah. is that good people go to heaven and bad people mm -hmm. go to hell. Um, no, that, that is a misconception. That's popular religion. That's not mm. um, what the apostles taught, and that doesn't come from Jesus' teachings. What the apostles taught and what comes from Jesus' teachings is that everybody's in fact got bad, which is offensive, but we have to accept it mm -hmm. through and look at ourselves honestly. And we uh, enter into heaven and have unity with God, not because of our own goodness, but because we're in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and he returns to where he belongs, the place from which he came, the very presence mm -hmm. of God. And so we in him enter in him. So only redeemed people go to heaven. Mm. It's not true that good people go to heaven. Um, there's yep. people who live very, very bad lives and yeah. are in Christ. Here's another misconception that is also part of uh, popular religion that heaven is a place for wispy spirits and ghosts, <laughs> right? And when we're in heaven, we don't have our physical bodies anymore and we're not like what we are. In fact, sometimes we wonder, will we remember each other? Will our memories be wiped out? Mm -hmm. Will it even be me? Yes, you are you and you will always be you. Hmm. We'll never be something else. You will never not be you. Hmm. So yes, of course, everything that you are goes with you. And everything that you are is redeemed in Christ. Now you might say, well, my sin doesn't go with me. Well, yes, but what you are in the ways that our sin impacted us, yeah. misformed us, is reformed and made whole in Christ. All of our memories, good and bad, painful and joyous, go with us. That's part mm -hmm. of us. And the painful memories, what do we do with them? God counsels us and comforts us and wipes away every tear. And so we go fully to heaven and our destiny is not to be a wispy spirit, but to be resurrected the way that he is. 
when the disciples saw Jesus, for example, Luke 24 in the upper room, they touched him. Thomas fell down and said, my Lord and my God, Mm -hmm. and put his finger in the nail Mm -hmm. prints in Jesus' palms. They touched him. They knew it was him. He wasn't a ghost. And that's vitally important. When my daughter was only four, the same one that asked me, will I see uh, Simmons again in heaven? Uh, She was sitting on my lap and she realized that one day her parents would die. And Mm -hmm. this realization came to her. She was just talking out loud to herself. And I was, I had her on my lap and she was talking about her mommy and daddy. And one day she said, I'm going to grow up. And then my mommy and daddy are going to be old. And then my mommy and daddy are going to die and I'm going to be a mommy. And she started crying when she said Mm -hmm. that. And I let her cry. And then I told her to um, put her hands on my face like this, because she would often do this. She would sit on my lap and she would stroke my beard like this. And I said uh, to her, what do you feel? And she said, I feel your, your scratchy beard. And I said, that's right. Do you like to sit on my lap and feel my scratchy beard? And she said, yeah. And I said, what happens to us when we die? And she said, we go to be in heaven with God. I said, that's, that's true. But is that the end of it? And she said, I don't know. And I said, what happened to Jesus when he died? And she said, well, God raised him from the dead. And I said, that's right. And his friends and his disciples, they hugged him and they touched him and they kissed him and they touched his scratchy beard because that's him. Do you want to touch my scratchy beard a long time from now, a thousand years from now, Mm -hmm. a thousand years from now? Do you still want to come and sit on my lap and touch my scratchy beard? And she said, yes said, do you still want me to be your daddy? She said, yes. I said, well, that's what we have in Jesus. Mm. We will be resurrected just like him. And you can come and sit on my lap and touch my scratchy beard and see that it's still me. It's not some ghost. Yeah. When I go to be with the Lord, I'm only away from you for a little bit. But forever Mm -hmm. we'll be together. We'll hug. We'll kiss. We'll hold hands. We'll sit together. And we'll still be together. And that was very meaningful for her as as a four-year-old. So to know the bodily resurrection that we will touch and that we will hug and that will be us is something that children have to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we don't just stop existing, that we're still there. Yeah. That I can even see that being important for our son. He's very sensitive in that way and sensitive to, you know, us being there or not being there. And I can imagine that would be a truth that he needs to know is that we're still going to be there. Yeah. And finally, what's one thing that you'd want every child to know about heaven? Heaven is wherever God is. Hmm. Uh, Heaven goes with God. That is uh, ultimately the place of God's presence. And so heaven is a distant place. It is Mm -hmm. as far away as you can imagine. On the other hand, heaven is also a very near place. Heaven is in us when the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. is in us. And so in the New Testament, the way that the apostles talk, they talk about heaven being here now and Jesus being here with us now, but also heaven being a place to which we're going and Jesus being someone to whom we will soon be reunited. Um, They talk about the kingdom of God and God's presence with us as already starting but not yet come. And so in both ways, and it feels a little bit like a contradiction, or both are true. And so one thing to know is we can look forward to heaven and being there and being united with those that we love and knowing that there'll never be again death or pain and that we'll be with God, but also knowing that heaven is here now and we can already start living in those ways Mm. in our relationships. When we love brothers and sisters in Christ, that's already a heavenly relationship. Um, Mm -hmm. When our parents are teaching us the truths of the gospel, that's already a relationship that's going to be in heaven, that we're learning from them and that we love learning these things from them. And then then you go and you play with your friends and you pretend to be angels and things like that. That's (laughs) already part of heaven. Um, (laughs) And so we're already starting to see some of that. So to know that it's not just distant, we can look forward to it, but it's already happening. Yeah, I remember being a child and hoping and praying I would get, <laughs> I would get into heaven, <laughs> the fear of not getting into heaven. But yeah, it is a um, fear. yeah, we just want to thank you, Dr. Roger, for joining us and talking to us about heaven and how curious children are and mm-hmm. how they are already thinking about heaven, even though 
um, you know, they're they're asked the way that they're asked in these mm-hmm. forms of questions. Uh, but it's important because again, they are they're thinking about it. Um, and so with with that, uh, we like to end our episodes with a benediction. Um, so if you would join us in that. To him who is able to do far more than we can understand, may he give us the wisdom to raise our children to first love God above all else and to love others as themselves. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Merchant, for joining us and talking through this heavy but really important subject. And for all the listeners, we thank you for joining us. You can join us every Wednesday. Episodes come out every Wednesday. Um, So we'll see you back here next Wednesday. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and be sure to subscribe and like the podcast so it'll be in your feed every time you jump on. Thanks.